You should always keep your project small as long as you can and don't allocate too much money at the start. People do stupid things when they have a giant budget. They overdesign, they overthink. They inevitably leads to much, much longer runways. And that kind of external pressure make people work harder and make people work as a team with cohesion. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm a product manager and an entrepreneur, and I used to be a data scientist at Google. This book is called Build, an orthodox guide to making things worth making. It's written by Tony Fadell. Started his 30 plus year Silicon Valley career at General Magic, the most influential startup nobody has ever heard of. Then he went on to make the iPod and the iPhone. He now leads the investment and advisory firm Future Shape, where he mentors the next generation of startups that are changing the world. So one of this chapter that really got me today called Heartbeats and Handcuffs. Let me just read a few things for you for now. The way you keep everyone moving in a team is by creating strong internal deadlines. Heartbeats that your team sets their calendar to. So basically this guy is really trying to promote the fact that if your internal team has something to look up to, like the Google IOs or WWDC, Apple, your team will work a lot more towards this internal deadline or goal than if you just keep telling them that, hey, we got to get aligned for this feature. We got to get to talk to this team. Can we schedule another meeting for the next week? These kind of things happen all the time if you work in tech. Like things are always get delayed. But what Tony was trying to promote in this book for, the, for this chapter of Heartbeats and Handcuffs is that screw those things, make everybody kind of nervous <laughs> because of internal expectation about delivery. This internal tension did not cause any trouble or problems for people because the pressure actually came from the outside. And that kind of external pressure make people work harder and make people work as a team with cohesion. Say, uh, because the outside world, uh, stakeholders or people who are just Apple fans, they all look up to what is going to get launched this year. The employees at Apple don't really feel like it's something that their manager is pressing on them, but instead people felt more like there's this mission that you gotta get it delivered and products actually got shipped. Uh, I'm not sure about how Apple functions today. So if you work at Apple and, and, and you feel like this is not the truth anymore, please let me know. But at least in the early days, when iPod and iPhone were just getting launched, apparently Apple was taking this for granted. And this just got me thinking because one thing that I really, really agree with is that uh, sometimes when, we, when I was leading a team or when I was building my own startup or product, what worked really effectively was that I tend to bring external incentives or external excitement to the team such that people still keep themselves motivated naturally without losing interest, without losing, losing hope. And I think that's the one thing that either product managers or entrepreneurs need to always keep in mind, that it is your responsibility to keep the team motivated, to keep the team stick together by bringing in some external excitement. An example I have is that when I was building one of my unsuccessful startups back then, I always try to pitch to investors and try to talk to them uh, and say, hey, we have this product. I would really like you to meet my team. And if you're interested, let's hop on a Zoom call. And these Zoom call meetings could really motivate the people on the team to feel like, hey, we're getting valued. We, we, better, we better impress these guys. And things just magically get done. And of course, as, as the team lead, as the founder, you still have to participate in all of these conversations, you still have to participate in these work such that people don't really get bored. People still continue to, to work on their things because they are working together with you, not just working for you. And I'm just gonna quote a few interesting thoughts from this book. Quoting, this one is saying, you should always keep your project small as long as you can and don't allocate too much money at the start. People do stupid things when they have a giant budget. They overdesign, they overthink. They inevitably leads to much, much longer runways, longer schedules, and slower heartbeats much, much slower heartbeats. So Tony really, really tried to highlight this word heartbeat in his book, in this chapter, because he feels like that is something that truly motivate early stage startups or early stage product teams to move forward to get things done. And he continued to say, generally any brand new product should never take longer than 18 months to ship, 24 at the limit, and the sweet spot is somewhere between nine and 18 months. And I, I definitely remember when I was working at Google that some of the products that I worked on, 
people tend to ship products at a very very long schedule and uh, even if people say hey we're gonna shoot for the moon such that we can potentially reach more results even if we don't finish everything at the deadline but still everything lasts for so long every, all the process take such a long time people continue to reschedule their meetings due to the fact that certain deadlines were becoming blockers but you know according to tony he actually criticized google i'm just gonna quote here real quick so he said that look at google its heartbeat is erratic unpredictable it works for them mostly sometimes you could work so much better google arguably only has one big external heartbeat each year at google io and most teams don't bother aligning with it at all because they typically just launch whatever they want whenever they want throughout the whole year so sometimes with real marketing behind it, but other times with just simple email campaigns. And he mentioned that it means that they can never actually communicate with their customers in a very cohesive way about their entire organization, about their entire schedule. And uh, if one team does that, another one does that, their announcements either just overlap or they ignore obvious opportunities to create such a unified narrative for Google as a company, unlike Apple. And nobody, not customers, not even employees can keep up with that. So that kind of leads to this culture at Google where I think people tend to tend to think that this is a good kind of balance in the job because you can really, really try to innovate uh, freely and you don't have any pressure. But in fact, oftentimes, especially these days, hardcore innovation happens very, very rarely. Maybe it takes a very long time, like what ChatGPT did to AI in the uh, in the recent few months. But uh, most of the time, product teams really rely on execution, and execution relies on heartbeats. You gotta somehow motivate people naturally so that they they stick to this thing, they stick to this one goal, and everybody has the same expectation. And that is that is very important. This book is trying to highlight that. And to end this session, I'm just gonna quote in, from this chapter real quick that he said, ultimately predictability is how you actually make your deadline because for the team to expect what is going to happen what is needed at a certain time of the year is so important to help organize the whole team with hundreds of thousands of people to work towards the same goal and breaking the rhythm of your external heartbeat should be avoided at all costs but sometimes it'll happen anyway something will break something will take longer than anyone expected. It almost always happens with the version one of your product when you're starting from scratch, trying to figure out everything at once. But once you got your process in place and can finally get your version one out the door on time, hit that deadline, you know, your heartbeat can settle down. It can get steady. And when you ship your version two, you'll actually be on time. And everyone on your team, your customers, the press, what will feel the rhythm that you're trying to promote. So yeah, I, I feel that's very insightful. Let me know what you think.